The years 1985 and 1986 are not that fondly remembered by Irish football fans. They only won 5-6 both seasons, but those years were dramatically different. 1985 was the final year in the tenure of Jerry Faust as head coach. 1986 was the first for Lou Holtz. Faust's final game was nothing short of a debacle. Miami pounded the Irish 58-7 in the Orange Bowl. Lou Holtz watched that game on TV and saw the work that needed to be done to put the Notre Dame program back among the nation's elite. The road was often rocky, especially during the 86 season. Michigan beat the Irish by a point at the stadium. Even with the loss, Notre Dame was ranked 20th the next week in the polls. Michigan State beat the Irish by five, Pittsburgh by one, Penn State by five, and LSU by two. The record, 4-6, as Notre Dame looked west and looked to USC. The men of Troy were coached by Ted Tolner, who was not a favorite of many of the USC fans. One reason was the fact that the Irish had beaten Troy three consecutive seasons. Tolner was also following one of USC's most popular coaches ever, John Robinson. USC gets a 48-yard field goal on its first possession. But Irish defensive back Steve Lawrence intercepts Rodney Pete on the next series, and Notre Dame goes to work. Running backs Mark Green, Hiawatha Francisco, and Braxton Banks help move the ball down the field. Quarterback Steve Berline connects with Tim Brown for a 12-yard gain to the USC 1. Berline then finds tight end Andy Heck with a shot put pass for the score. The extra point attempt by John Carney is blocked. Notre Dame gets the ball back, but Burline throws the interception. That Lewis Brock, son of the Baseball Hall of Fame member, returns 58 yards for the score, 10-6 Trojans. Terry Enderzak replaces Burline, but Notre Dame cannot move, and USC goes to the air. Pete goes deep to Lonnie White for a 53-yard gain. Leroy Holt scores in the next play at 17-6 USC. Teams trade field goals before halftime. John Carney hits on a 33-yarder, but Don Schaefer booms one through from 60 as time expires in the second quarter. USC has momentum and a 20-9 lead at half. Schaefer and Carney again connect in the third quarter. With a score 23-12 and just under nine minutes remaining in the period, Pete engineers a 70-yard 15-play drive. The Trojans use 11 minutes and 8 seconds to make it 30-12. Then, a harbinger of 1987 electrifies the Irish faithful in the Coliseum. Tim Brown returns Schaefer's kickoff 57 yards into USC territory. Burline connects with Banks out of the backfield for a 22-yard touchdown. Lou Holtz decides to go for the two-point conversion, and the Irish get it as Burline finds Milt Jackson for the deuce. It's now a 10-point game, 30-20 USC. But in the first series of the fourth quarter, Pete caps another Trojan scoring march by sneaking over from the one. With just over 12 minutes remaining in the game, Notre Dame trails by 17. Burline, though, takes only three plays before he finds Jackson in the corner of the end zone for a 42-yard strike. Jackson makes a beautiful catch for the score. After a penalty for illegal motion, Carney connects on the PAT, 37-27 Trojans. Pete bleeds the clock and the yardage as he takes his team deep into Irish territory. On fourth and goal from the five, Pete tries to sneak for a first down, which would make it goal to goal and doom Notre Dame. But Pete is stopped. A flag is thrown for unsportsmanlike conduct, and on the field were questionable calls to plague the Irish for years. USC now knows the feeling. From his own 25, Burnline connects with Brown for 49 yards to the USC 26-yard line. Eventually, Bank scores around the left end, and Burline finds Heck for the conversion.
after trailing by 17 points to begin the quarter. Notre Dame now trails by two. Tim Brown makes the catch of the kick at the Notre Dame 28. The 1987 Heisman Trophy winner then serpentines his way through the SC punt team until Spurls finally makes the tackle. The ball ends up at the Trojan 16. Two minutes, 15 seconds remain on the Coliseum clock. The Irish inch down to the six, then to the two. Two seconds remain as John Carney is called on for victory or a head-shaking loss. Carney missed against Michigan, Pittsburgh, and LSU earlier in the season in key situations. The man who eventually will become one of pro football's best place kickers rips it through the uprights for a 38-37 Notre Dame victory. It was later learned by those in the Coliseum that they were the only ones to actually see the kick as it occurred. CBS did not return to the game action from its commercial break in time to see the actual game winner. 